everyone, Zeddy here again today with a brand new video. And today I was going to do a custom card review. I got more Twitter submissions as well as stuff I want to go over on Reddit. But I'll put that, push that back till tomorrow because there was an article printed today by PC Gamer that just... It's, it's distressing. It's kind of concerning. It's frustrating as somebody who is, you know, been outspoken about the game. And I read your comments all the time. I read, I mean, the sentiment on my videos that we've been, you know, how to improve Hearthstone and all this stuff. And PC Gamer put out a, an interview uh, today with uh, interviewing Igzar, our Dean Ayala, the lead card designer at Hearthstone. And it just came off as tone deaf, as like they're not listening to us. He literally put out a tweet asking for what would bring people back and we went over that, and uh, Reed just went over that in a really well done video, and none of that was touched in this interview. It just felt like a completely one-sided fluff piece, and I'm honestly, I just want to call it out. I want to call a spade a spade here. This this interview was just like an advertisement. It, it felt like hashtag ad, hashtag promoted. And let's go over, let's go over the good and the bad of the article, because honestly... I feel like there's a lot more, uh, a lot more bad than there is good here, but let's take a look. And just another friendly reminder, we've now gotten it down below 62% of you guys are not yet subscribed to the channel. We're pushing hard for 10,000 subs, we're already a quarter way through the next 1,000, and if you could help out, click that subscribe button, get us to that goal, it'd be greatly appreciated. I'm humbled that you watch my videos, and if you feel I've earned that sub, I w it would mean the world to me. But anyways, let's get on with the video. So let's start straight up. This article is literally titled, How the Hell Did Hearthstone Metas Get So Healthy? And I saw a pizza tweet, like a what face when he saw this. I put out my own tweet, like, how is this healthy? Like, what bizarre, like, what bizarre world are we living? Anyways, but yes, the title of the article is literally, How the Hell Did Hearthstone's Meta Get So Healthy? And when you have a title like that, you're obviously going to be very, uh, it's very subjective and it's going to be like, oh, well, it's healthy. So we're going to tell you why it is and not really go against the arguments as to why it might not be. Starts off by saying losing always sucks. It doesn't matter whether it's Tempo Mage, Kriya by Shenanigans or Dragon Priest stealing your cards. There's basically no fun way to lose. But frustration aside for a moment, it's clear right now that it's one of the healthiest metas Hearthstone's ever seen. So okay, they're they're making it, they're putting the counter argument in early about the RNG, right? And then it's pretty much brushed aside, except for like one little section where again it's brushed aside. But they say if you don't believe me, look at Vicious Syndicate's data reader per report. So they're basically alluding to the fact that Vicious Syndicate, if you're not familiar, they're like a a website, a, a data reapers resource, like they, they collect all data from a ton of players using their own like software and algorithms and stuff and compile like one of the best decks in the game. And the last few reports, they've literally reported no tier one decks. Like there's a bunch of tier two decks. So there's a lot of like, it's a lot of balance in a way. Like there's a lot of playable classes that are relatively same power level. Does that equate a he healthy meta? Absolutely not. A healthy meta means a meta that people enjoy playing, they want to play, they want to watch, all that stuff. And if you're, at least on Twitch, if you're looking right now, people don't even barely stream the format. When I'm seeing people talk about standard, they don't want to play it, they're too frustrated. But yes, power level of decks are relatively even. But again, this doesn't equate health of a meta. Health of a meta, like I said, is do you want to play the freaking game? And it feels like people don't really want to play Hearthstone, they rather play Battlegrounds or just anything else entirely outside of yes there are people that of course enjoy hearthstone but it seems to be a lot less than usual and it's again this is really seen true in my videos where i you know say something isn't going right that something's not right or whatever like how do we improve things and these are relatively popular videos they're relatively liked with a lot of comments talking about why they're not happy and like how they can fix things so this isn't like an unpopular sentiment hearthstone isn't in the best of spots in terms of like fun and playing wise but yes i'll agree that balance wise in terms of like 50 percent win rate sure it's decent but does that mean anything no that doesn't mean the meta is healthy it means it's balanced but balanced again does not equate fun go into some t discussion about how it's not an easy feat to balance the game right now that they've had like 15 expansions five adventures 39 keywords by the way we had a tier list on keywords check that out but um yeah they, they basically said that you know when they would make an expansion like 20 or 30 cards they basically knew wouldn't see play they were like arena cards or whatever but lately with the new expansions with 135 cards they try and make every single one of them playable 
And yeah, I, I could definitely see that reflection in the sets. The power levels have definitely gone up and a lot less filler cards. There still are some, like the uh, Lifesteal minion for uh, Paladin or whatever. But yeah, overall, I would agree they've definitely been, you know, putting a lot more playable cards there. So, I mean, that's cool and all. Does that does it equate to a healthy meta? I don't know, but it's a challenge they have to they have to deal with. They mentioned one of their approaches to getting a healthier metagame is basically updating the game quicker with balance patches as we have seen. Um, this is debatable because a lot of their quicker balance patches have just been like unnecessary or pointless nerfs. We've seen it with the Beige Quest and Wild, saw it with Bloodsworn, Mercenary, Blood Boil, Brute, and Warrior that literally like did nothing. Um, we have seen it with other stuff like the uh, Shadow Jeweler, Hanar, and Rogue. We've seen a lot of nerfs. There's like micromanagement stuff where, yeah, you're you're moving win percentages by a point or two to achieve better balance, but you're not ruining, you're not dealing with the unfun nature of these cards, the unfun nature of infinite value from a Hanar or cheating out a Brute and just winning the game early. That didn't really change. And of course, with the Mage Quest, you, you still complete the quest basically and do the exact same thing with the deck. So yeah, it's slightly more balanced. So you're achieving those 50% win rates, but it's not fun, which doesn't equate, in my opinion, to healthiness. Ironically, um, Ixar highlights Libram Paladin from the current meta as somewhat like even Paladin is not a deck frustrating to face, so they haven't adjusted it that quickly. Whereas old decks like Resurrect Priest, Freeze, Freeze Mage, and OTK decks, they were firing line for more balance more often, which is a load of crap. I'm sorry, Resurrect Priest was nerfed once, ever, period. And that was Barnes, and that was like two or three years later after it was put to Wild and... They literally never nerf the archetype, and they use that as an argument, or whoever put this in the article. I don't know if it doesn't look like it's quoted from Dean here, but like, horrible argument. But, anyways, they said Freeze Mage and OTK builds are balanced more often, which I suppose so. But again, they're, they're comparing Libram Paladin to an, not an unfun thing when I cannot believe how many times I do a nerf suggestion video where they're like, what about Paladin? Paladin's ridiculous. It's broken. Why aren't you complaining about Paladin? The reason I don't mention Paladin is it's not broken. It's at high legend. You don't see it because it's not that great. But they kind of use it as an example here, which is just bizarre to me that they're like, oh yeah, this is a really strong deck. Yeah, maybe a diamond ranks, but at the highest level, you don't even see it in tournaments. It's rarely ever brought. Just a really bizarre example. And again, Freeze Mage, or sorry, Resurrect Priests, it literally nerfed once, and it took years and years of complaining to get the one card in Barnes nerfed, and literally no other Res Priest card has ever been nerfed. It's one of the least nerfed archetypes in Hearthstone history, so really bad example there. There was also an inter interesting tidbit that they say that the balance patches are far less reactive than we may realize. So if we're complaining about it and then they throw the patch out, it wasn't because of that. Or at least that's what they claim. And that uh, they're usually done week weeks ahead of time. So at least that's an interesting little tidbit of knowledge if you're interested in that. Um, one of the more interesting things was they talked about the introduction of Demon Hunter. Um, they said within the first 24 hours of Demon Hunter, I was an absolute terror. And in an unprecedented move, the first nerfs were announced a day later. And it took uh, multiple swings of the nerf hammer before Demon Hunter settled down. And Dean himself, or Ixar said himself, Demon Hunter release is probably the most powerful thing we've ever released. Not probably. <laughs> it definitely was. Uh, every time we nerf a card, that means we missed to some degree. With Demon Hunter, we were a little disappointed in the hero power that was on launch, but was pretty quick to fix. We changed three or four cards, and we changed them pretty minorly. Okay, so yeah. They changed it day one somewhat minorly, but that didn't address Demon Hunter at all. Demon Hunter was the tier one ridiculous overpowered thing for three months after its inception. They're acting like the day one nerfs, oh, it was scaled back pretty well and was reasonable. It was not. Demon Hunter and Warrior were like the only playable classes in terms of high win rates for almost the entirety of Ashes of Outland until they finally nerfed Warglaves of Azanoth, Metamorphosis, and um, I believe Kane. Finally! like a month before they wanted to sell the new expansion. So there's a little bit of a history being rewritten here that these tweaks were minor. And also Skull to 6, Anton bumped up a mana, Mana Beam a mana, a Drachy durability. I don't want to call those minor. Minor is like Glaybound Adept going from a 6-4 to a 7, or 7-4 to a 6-4. Those are minor. Those were significant. Four significant cards change. And 
do, do we need to go over all the cards that were listed? Like, it's it's ridiculous how many were nerfed. So if they're saying that every time they nerf a card, it's a bit of a failure, well, they basically have admitted that almost half of the cards for Demon Hunter were a failure in terms of launch and balance because, yeah, there was like 13 to 14 Demon Hunter cards nerfed. So, hey, at least they admit they're failures even though they're kind of sidestepping it. Uh, he does allude to the fact that, um, you know, they like the fact that it's low RNG, which I agree, I like that. Um, they wanted to spend time finding something that's fun about the archetype and all that. I mean, I guess aggro is fun. People like when face and they talked about the big demon build not really coming through fruition. And uh, it sounds like they're going to force that next expansion because like he wants to see it happen. And you know when they want to see something happen, they make it happen. So maybe we got big demon hunter actually playable coming up soon. Speaking of that, they talked about shaman. Uh, they talked about warlock being relatively bad right now. Basically saying there's big plans for Shaman to be playable, whether it's in a future patch or the next expansion. If you're concerned about Shaman, look forward to yet another overpowered set of cards coming. Again, this goes to my uh, why does Shaman suck video problem of every time Shaman sucks, they gotta go crazy and print something stupid and then make everybody hate Shaman. So, looks like we might be going down that road, but hopefully not. But the, the main issue I have, and I'm going to get into it right now, is the created by section. I'm using quotations because that's what they did on this article. And it's the most one-sided, glossed over part of this article when Ixar himself put out the feeler of what would bring you back to Hearthstone very recently. And overwhelmingly, the top response was less created by, less RNG. And you know what they did? With all the quotes and all the twit longers and everything going on right now about why created by is a problem, they use the one tweet that I mentioned on This Week in Hearthstone from Zalay that says, if I was, uh, you know, if I didn't like random, I'd play, I'd play chess, you know. Uh, this is the tweet. He says, maybe I should clarify this with my sincere thoughts. I've been saying as much on stream for weeks now. I really don't have a problem with losing to random stuff in Hearthstone. I sign it up for it by playing the game. If I want to be playing chess, I would be. And that, that's basically what they summed up. Is like, oh, you know, created by is fine. You go play chess if you don't like random. We all play Hearthstone because we like random to an extent. All of us do. Like, that's just the dumbest freaking argument I've ever heard. I don't like, you know... I don't like random, therefore don't play Hearthstone. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I would play chess if I don't want RNG, I guess. But, you know, we play Hearthstone since day one, and were we always complaining about RNG in the game? I mean, sometimes, like, there was rag complaints, maybe, or brawl, or... But, but those were, like, that was the essence of RNG in Hearthstone, was you lose a brawl, you lose a... You know, the rag shot was something. It was like... But these were all calculable things, like... You could play, you're like, oh, I'm at 8 health. Well, if he plays rag and it hits me in the face, I guess I'm dead. I have one, he has one big minion who brawls and it survives. I'm dead, right? These are all, you know, outcomes you can expect. And I think that kind of randomness is fun, in engaging, makes for highlights, makes for interesting games and all that. But we're now at a point where literally everything and anything can happen in a game. Mages can cast like five evocations, which can get a bunch of random spells, which can get a bunch of random creatures that aren't even in their class, can get puzzle boxes, which aren't even in their, you know, cast spells that aren't even in the class. You have rogue can discover legendaries from any class, spells from any class, spells from mage. It, the list goes on and on and on, and you have so many variables, there's so many things, and the power level of these cards are so insanely high, you're gonna run them, that a lot of your games are completely decided by RNG elements that have nothing to do with your play or your opponent's play. It's purely random, and whoever won, it just happened randomly. And that is not what we want in the game. That is frustrating. Or at least a lot of us don't want. I'm not going to speak for everybody, but a lot of us don't want. But this late tweet's like, oh, if you don't like any random, go play chess. Like, you know, any random's fine. Any random. That's not what we're talking about. And this article doesn't touch on this at all. They just say, you know, oh, Zalay tweeted this, and, you know, we're going to always have some card generation, and well, Dean's like, or Xar's like, yeah, we're scaling it back a bit. That's it. That's all we got. We didn't say anything about, you know, the scaling back the range of it. Like, I don't think any of us really care if they scale back, like, scale created by that much back in terms of volume of cards made. We just want it scaled back in its scope, its, its range, like bring it back to a reasonable level where you can kind of expect to play around things, whereas it's just everything is random, everything is nonsense, everything is stupid. And none of that's addressed here. And they just act like, you know, Zalay's tweet, it represents the community. And I think that's 
that's dog shit because it doesn't. It, do it doesn't. If you read, like I said, the comments on Ixar's tweet on how to improve the game, a bunch of twit longers from pro players, just comments in YouTube comments everywhere. It's the creative buys out of control. It's not fun. It ruins the gaming experience when you lose to it. You just don't want to play. Like the, the high of winning from it, it doesn't outweigh the bad of losing to it. And that's my frustration with the article in particular. And um, they do say that, you know, they're scaling it back and all this stuff, but it just, it's just not, it hasn't been enough. And we need, it needs to be a lot more in terms of its scope. Like it's, its range is way too big. And the last point, I just want to put this up as a joke because this part of the, I thought this was just hilarious. Uh, they talked about control decks in this article. They said that control decks these days have like one infinite generator and you build your deck around that. There's control decks in the game? Where, where, where have I been? And they they talk about they're hoping for more interesting control options available in Stand before 2020 is over. I wasn't aware of control decks. We have like Control Warrior, I guess, that's really bad and only beats Demon Hunter and is like a ladder tech choice, and that's it. Galacron Priest, maybe, but that's not really a control deck. That's a value deck, and I I just I'm confused. I don't I don't know where these control decks are. They the all these different control decks with their generators. I just. I guess we have a different understanding of what control means, because, like, I just don't see it. So, yeah, apparently uh, we'll get more interesting control options added to the non-existent options we have now. So, that's cool. But, anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Do you think this meta is in a healthy state? Am I losing my mind here? Am I alone? But I, I really don't think so. But, again, let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day. And stay salty, my friends. <laughs>